Cosmic Skeptic and Ben Shapiro. So the issue being discussed today is, I suppose, the existence of hell. This is in response to a video from Cosmic Skeptic from about four years ago. It's something that I saw, I don't know, a month or so ago, and though I certainly think it's unfair to hold someone to something they said four years ago on their YouTube channel, so I won't assume that Cosmic Skeptic today stands by everything in his video. But that's really besides the point, because the reason I wanted to reply to this is because he shows the same type of attitude that a lot of atheists show in a lot of online discussions. So, the specific topic of the video is whether or not it's abusive to teach children about the existence of hell. This was initiated by a comment that Ben Shapiro received asking this question, and Ben Shapiro gave his response, and Cosmic Skeptic responded to Ben Shapiro, and now I'm responding to Cosmic Skeptic. So I guess that means we're in response-ception, or whatever. Nicholas says, Dear Ben, today I got into an argument with an atheist friend of mine who believes that telling your kids that living a sinful life will lead you to hell is true abuse and will scar your kids for life. I'm not an extremely religious person, but I believe in my Christian values. How do I explain the morality of teaching kids about sin? Well, I mean, I think the, the, the fact is that teaching children that certain behavior is going to lead to an unhappy life both here and in the hereafter is not child abuse. It's actually a valid warning. Okay, I'm just going to jump in here for a second. Hell is not an unhappy place. It's not like some kind of environment in which you'll be fine, but a bit upset and regretful that you didn't strictly adhere to scripture. No, hell is the worst possible place imaginable. This is an argument which I'm sure many of you have heard before. Just recently, I believe, it was Hunter Avalone on Twitter who was making this same argument, and he was implying, as atheists often imply or outright argue, that the very concept of hell should be criminalized. After all, other types of abuse against children are, so why shouldn't this? This is one of the many things that atheists try to throw at Christians and other religious people to show how awful they are. How could you believe in a god that would do something like this? How can you teach your children something like this? And Cosmic Skeptic says, well, what's even the point in teaching it this way, when you can just teach it in a secular way, and that ends up being a much better way to teach children, or anyone, morality. Alas, there is a solution. If morals are taught to children in a secular manner, they become conversational. If a parent decides to teach their child that being gay is wrong because of reasons other than divine command, like perhaps the spread of AIDS or the impossibility of conception, then when the child grows up, he or she will be able to analyse their morality and develop their own moral philosophy. In other words, they'll be able to think for themselves. Either way, they can argue for or against the morality of homosexuality without the need for God. But if you use the prior method and tell them that they're going to hell and that it's God's word, then it becomes immutable. You cannot disagree. You immediately remove all hope for philosophical autonomy. Okay, so this is the distinction that Cosmic Skeptic is drawing. There is secular values, which you're able to debate about and have conversations and decide what you think seems most true. And there are religious values, which are all the result of some sort of divine command, which you either have to accept at face value or reject. Okay, now, the misunderstanding that Cosmic Skeptic has here of really basic Christian theology is really annoying. When I first started this video, I intended on not getting into the specifics of Christian theology any more than was absolutely necessary, because I sort of figure when it comes to Christian atheist debates, there isn't that much of a point in getting into this stuff. Because if you already disagree over the existence of God, why does it matter on debating specific aspects of your theistic worldview? I'm also not even really sure what the sort of presumed religious audience that Cosmic Skeptic is replying to here is. Because there's really three groups. Orthodox Jews, because Ben Shapiro is the specific person being replied to. Catholics and Evangelicals. Now, why do I say Catholics and Evangelicals specifically? Well, normally I assume that most popular atheists are replying specifically to Evangelicals, just because that's the most common form of theism in the Anglo world currently. Among the new atheists, you could really see this especially with people like, say, 
Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins. Since they were both British, you might assume that they would be responding to something more particular to Britain. But generally, the type of Christianity they were responding to was American evangelical Christianity. However, Cosmic Skeptic is Irish, and he's from a Catholic background, so one might suppose that the presumed audience is Catholics. And this whole presumed audience discussion probably seems like it's really besides the point, but it's kind of important, because what he's saying here is just absolutely, completely wrong about Catholic moral theology. Catholicism, quite famously, has a very robust tradition of natural law theology, the entire point of which is getting beyond the simplistic, it's bad because God says so. Now, of course, if God says so, then that's a pretty good authority to go on for something being bad. But Cosmic Skeptic specifically says, Other than divine command, The fact is, Christians, especially Catholics, though I'm of course not limiting natural law solely to Catholics, it's just Catholics are most well known for that, do indeed have a robust set of arguments that go beyond divine command theory. Now, of course, I'm not saying these are unrelated concepts. The fact that a certain action is against the nature of that action, and therefore sinful, is not at all divorced from the fact that God also declares that act to be sinful. But what did Cosmic Skeptic specifically say? He said, you can reason through morality when you approach it from a secular point of view, where from a Christian point of view, or a religious point of view in general, it's just arbitrary commands that you either have to accept or you'll go to hell. This is just not true. Natural law, among other theories, do have ways to reason through morality. Okay, but I know what Cosmic Skeptic would say. He would say that, yes, I know that Christians can present arguments that they think logically proves certain moral positions of theirs. The point is, however, that there's a determined end goal. It's not a coincidence that the things that Thomas Aquinas said were immoral were those specific things and not something else. Those were the things that were already condemned by the worldview that he had, and he used natural law to try to prove that. Now, in a certain sense, this is, of course, true. Despite the paranoid conspiracy theories of some leftists, who claim things like the Bible did not condemn certain sexual acts until the 1950s. The Bible, in fact, has always condemned those acts, and Christians have always read it as condemning those acts. But that doesn't mean that within religion there isn't room for moral debate. Even within Catholicism specifically, which is one of the most hierarchical of religions, there is still quite a bit of room for debate on which actions exactly are moral and which aren't. And there are, of course, liberal Christians who claim that all sorts of actions which have traditionally been condemned are actually, in fact, okay. But Cosmic Skeptic would probably say a group like liberal Christians are just a completely different group from what he's discussing here, so they shouldn't really be treated as the same category, and I actually would more or less agree with him on that. But even if we were to just say look at conservative evangelicals, there are still many moral issues which are considered to be open for debate. One of many would be the issue of divorce. Most evangelicals would say that divorce is permissible under certain circumstances, usually adultery, but it's not a totally unpopular minority opinion that divorce is never okay. I know to some people it might sound a bit weird that there are some evangelicals that believe that, but I'll link an article below from a Baptist which argues just that point. But okay, okay. I suppose this is all in the context of teaching morality to children. What Cosmic Skeptic would probably say is that, sure, some religious groups might consider certain topics to be open to debate, but they have a large amount of things that they don't consider to be open to debate. And even those things that they do consider to be open to debate aren't things that most parents would probably be okay with debating their children on. None of that is really wrong, but it's presenting an incredibly naive or perhaps even dishonest view of what secular morality is like. Am I seriously expected to believe that your average progressive atheist parent is open to seriously debating with their child about whether or not the many isms that they condemn are good or bad? If all Cosmic Skeptic means here is that these progressive parents might use the Socratic method with their children, then I suppose that's fine enough, but that's not really any more open-minded than the Christian parents. And I certainly don't think the Socratic method is anything that atheists have any exclusive claim to. But okay, so I think I've shown that there isn't really any difference in whether or not Christian or atheist parents can use reason when teaching morality to their children, and there isn't any difference in whether or not the moral views are predetermined and the parents are going to be unwilling to compromise on certain foundational moral truths with their children. 
These are very spurious assertions that Cosmic Skeptic made in this video, but the main argument he was making was that it is wrong to teach your children about hell. So how do I deal with that? But first, there's one other thing from this section of the video that I want to respond to. When he says this, in fact, the only way that this child could now reconcile something like being gay, for instance, with such religious prescription, is if they entertain the idea that maybe God doesn't exist at all, and you wonder why faith in God is dwindling in the 21st century. This is quite the strange thing for Cosmic Skeptic to admit here. Most atheists claim that the reason that they're an atheist is because there's just no evidence for God. Show me the evidence. Show me the God particle in the test tube. And certainly most of the arguments that Cosmic Skeptic makes against the existence of God are rational arguments. But he seems to be admitting right here that the reason why many people become atheists is because they have sexual urges that they can't control, or they are unwilling to control. Christians often make fun of atheists on that exact point and claim that's the reason, but he seems to just be saying, yeah, that's the case sometimes. But okay. Okay, okay. Let's get to the meat of the argument. The issue of hell. I got my facts, I got my logic, and I'm prepared to destroy Cosmic Skeptic. First, though, for context, you need to see this clip. Right, faith believes that, that the idea of heaven or punishment in the afterlife or a, a comeuppance in the afterlife is a real thing. So it's not like you're lying to your kid. This isn't Santa Claus or Easter or, or the Easter Bunny. Right? This is this is actually something different. This is you telling what you perceive to be a truth to your children, so that's not... Okay, I am genuinely astounded by the lack of critical analysis here. You just said that this is something different, that because you're teaching something that you perceive as truth, not just opinion to your children, it's therefore not abuse. Do you seriously suppose that if I genuinely believe something to be true, that automatically qualifies me to teach it to my children? So Ben says, presumably you think that hell is real, therefore it can't be wrong to teach your children about it. And Cosmic Skeptic says that that's a ridiculous line of logic. Thinking something is real does not necessarily mean that it's okay to teach your kids whatever you think is real. And this is basically the final form of the argument in this video from Cosmic Skeptic. He talks a bit more about this, but that's basically his conclusion. Now, Cosmic Skeptic certainly would be correct if what Ben Shapiro meant was that you think hell is real, things you think are real are okay to teach to your children, therefore it's okay to teach your children about hell. The second premise there is just wrong. There are things that could be immoral to teach your children at a certain age, even if the actual contents of what you're teaching is entirely true. For example, you could tell your children particularly graphic stories about war, and that could traumatize them, and it could be wrong to teach them that, even though the actual details could all be factually correct. Alternatively, if there is, say, a minefield in front of your house, then you not only can, but you must teach your children about that. And it doesn't matter how scary it might seem to them, it's information that they need to have. Now, if all Cosmic Skeptic is trying to say here is that there are particular explanations of hell that are too graphic for children, then I suppose that's fair enough. But that's not really what he's trying to say. What he's really trying to do here is skip the argument. The actual argument that matters, and why this entire argument from atheists is so stupid, is whether or not God exists, and whether or not the contents of divine revelation that Christians claim to have is true or false. Skipping to its mean to teach a certain type of divine revelation is just ignoring the argument from before. And this is why this type of argument is attractive to atheists. And I'm not saying that Cosmic Skeptic is someone who hasn't actually tried to take on the classical arguments for the existence of God. He has. I've seen his debates on these topics, and he understands it certainly much better than most atheists do. But the point of this argument is so you can just skip those other arguments. Yes, if hell doesn't exist, it is mean to teach your children about that. But if hell does exist, then it's profoundly mean to not warn your children about the consequences that their actions will have. There isn't really very much middle ground here. The question that first needs to be determined is, is any of this real? But skipping to whether or not it's mean is just ignoring the argument. Thanks for watching. I've kind of been struggling recently with finding topics to make videos on, so if anyone would like to suggest anything, I would very much appreciate suggestions in the comments. 
And please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, share these videos with anyone who you think will enjoy them, and donate to my subscribe store or Patreon if you enjoy this content. And a special thanks to my donors, yourself, Siphius Rex, Lita, Max Jerome, and Mitt Vestry. We live in a society. Quo Pregranator, Josiah, King of Evil Florida and the Moon, Seth Apex, Cringewalker, Zian Harris, Thomas Thomist, Augustine, Skytoucher, Matthias the Templar, Lewis, and the Phantom.